Hello, beautiful fire signs. My name is Joanna. I call myself Joanna the Healer. Used to call myself Joanna the Medium. Thank you so much for uh, for joining me. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for coming back. And for those who are, uh, or those of you who are new, uh, thank you so much. Um, I hope you like what you hear, and I do hope you stay. Uh, I will clearly state my intention, which is what I'm getting in the habit of doing. And my intention with these messages is to uh, give you. Uh, information that will help you navigate through this process of ascension. Uh, what is ascension? Essentially, ascension means us moving past certain barriers, barriers, becoming uh, a, a lighter human being. And when I say lighter, I don't necessarily mean physical weight, although when we drop density in terms of lower vibrations, we often do tend to uh, drop weight. So right away, there's a message for some of you. If you have been struggling with weight, uh, perhaps for most of your life, perhaps uh, lately or recently, uh, know that with sh with shedding uh, old heavy emotions, uh, and we will talk about what that may be for you, uh, you will often um, sh your weight will often shift. So if you have been uh, if you have been having trouble putting on weight. Uh, chances are, as you go through this process right now, uh, and I'm being asked to say the recalibration, you will get to a point where your body will come back to a certain uh, certain uh, balanced place where you may put on a little bit of weight and that will be healthy for you. For those of you who struggled a lot with physical uh, weight, uh, as you go through this process of recalibration, I love that term, thank you, uh, we'll talk about what recalibrating is, uh, you will find that as you shed your old weight in terms of uh, feelings, emotions, beliefs, things of such nature, you will begin to shed weight as well. Uh, before I go on further with this message, let me just say that this is the first time I'm doing this format. So I already see it's running away with, it has legs of its own. So, and you're the fire, fire element is the first one that I'm doing in this new way. So I don't quite know how it's going to turn out, but I can sense there's an excitement with it. So I'm going to give a general uh, feeling for the fire signs to Together, and then I have a, a message for each uh, each sign, Sagittarius, Leo, and Aries at the end. So uh, there's a little bit of both. Let me know if you like it, and um, let's just keep on going. So uh, when I tuned in uh, to your guys' energy, uh, to the fire, fire element, the word that I uh, received was rehabilitation. And a moment ago, I was talking about recalibration. So uh, the word re 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 something re to recalibrate or to rehabilitate means to bring something back to a norm either a new norm or the, the norm that has been so, so in order for us to recalibrate or rehabilitate something must have happened and it feels like in the month of april <clears throat> and when i say something must have happened I'm talking about what's happening, just look outside your window, in our global community. Lots of things are happening and um, it is affecting everyone. So for fire signs, Sagittarius, Leo and Aries, uh, the month of April and mm, I want to say most of May, thank you. Um, so it looks like it's a period of about two months. You will be in a space that is uh, effectively called uh, rehabilitation. And I actually went on to look what rehabilitation means as per dictionary, Webster's Dictionary. And rehabilitation is the action of restoring someone uh, to health or normal life through, uh, through training, whatever. So we are going to, or you, will be going through the month of April and most of May. Uh, rethinking, recalibrating, refinancing for some of you, reorienting yourself. So from where I stand, this is a good sign because it tells me what's happening right now, and I am recording this on March 24th, what's happening right now is, is, uh, is, is going to come to almost like a, 
not a standstill, but it's it's not going to keep on rising. It's going to come to it, it's going to come to its natural space where it'll kind of settle here. And because of it, it, it it's almost like something gets normalized. So to me, it feels uh, like in April and May things are going to start to come back to norm, whatever the norm is. And because the norm for many will be new, it, uh, it, it will be a perfect time to rethink, reconsider, recalibrate, remanage, um, anything of that sort. And chances are quite high that whatever you are recalibrating, rethinking or redoing, uh, you will not put back to its original state because through the process of what's going on, you would have had realized, probably most of you, that there are some pieces in your life that don't fit anymore. And they didn't fit for a long time, but through the process of what's happening, those pieces were really highlighted in your life. And uh, for some of you, it could be your jobs were uh, temporarily taken away. For some of you, your uh, certain things that you dependent on, uh, you couldn't be dependent on because they closed. Everybody has their own structure <clears throat> and the way they navigate through life. And for the last little few weeks, we have two or three weeks, we have been uh, navigating life very much differently for most people than we are used to and because of the circumstances that we are experiencing globally. So there's no need for me, Joanna, to say that we are going through time of change. And for majority of you, as I'm being asked to say, this will yield a positive change. Unfortunately for some people who have passed on, um, not you, uh, who have passed on, uh, it, 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 it wasn't positive. Well, to the person who's passed on, it was positive because they went home. But to the people who have, uh, but to the person's family and friends and loved ones, obviously that's not. So what I'm saying here, there is absolutely people who have been affected by it in what we call a negative way. No question about it. Um, but for most of you um, who are hearing this, you will come out of this kind of, you know, little bit scrapes and bruises because I feel we all have and will have, but you will be able to recover. Not only that, you will be able to recover much more strongly. And for some of you, I am being specifically asked to say it is to do with finances. So if your finances have been hurting or have been hit because of this enormous change that's taking place. And I don't know how, well, there's very few people where it wouldn't be hit. Some people uh, have a positive effect from that. But if you if you are one of those who uh, have been hit or you've struggled financially, uh, things may have been taken away, uh, most of you, uh, majority of you will recover from this and you will be even stronger. But what I do see is that in the process of the recovery or the recalibration or restoring, you will consciously get rid of pieces that take too much of your focus or attention, but don't give you back equally in terms of what you give. So something you give effort to that doesn't yield um, back to you. Uh, friendships that have uh, been kind of sort of there draining your energy, but you that you wanted to be a nice person, you didn't want to say anything. I feel those are the things that will uh, uh, that will give way to uh, to something new. So the recalibration will uh, afford many of you new opportunities. For some of you, the afford is in the financial sector. For others of you, it is uh, afford to. Literally what I see is a drastic and a radical change, many of you stepping into your own power. It's like if you have been holding your power back, you're like, screw it, I'm doing it. No time like a present. And um, sometimes we have to be pushed against the wall in order to snap out of our powerlessness and step into our power. So from what I see, from my angle, this is a very, very, very positive sign. And then I see someone holding a torch and 
um, the torch to me is like, um, you know, when an Olympics, World Olympics start, somebody runs with a torch. The torch is a significance of something starting, something exciting, something new, something that deserves our attention. And uh, the new to me is really about opportunities and possibilities. So it may look not so happy from where you are standing right now. Um, you will be seeing this, most of you, at the beginning of April. Uh, but at the same time, there is something absolutely wonderful happening in the background, which is something we cannot see with our physical eyes. Uh, some people who are in tuned uh, will see, and many of you listening to me, you are very in tuned. I see it in your comments. So some of you uh, know and understand that the process of this or what we are going through is uh, Gaia essentially clearing herself. So we are we are clearing. And um, it, it um, I see the prize at the end of all of this. And I, I'm saying prize, which means this is a, there's a prize at the end of this, which means there's something good at the end of this. And although you cannot touch it, you cannot feel it yet, some of you can, uh, I see it, I see it there, but I can't, I can't touch and I can't bring it to you and say, here, I told you this is what it is. And a lot of it really does depend in what you believe. Do you believe in lack and lack of authority or do you believe in abundance? And do you believe in your own power? And um, there is no time like the present that your power and what you believe in is being tested. And old habits die hard. And in times of anxiousness or amplified fear, we tend to rev we tend to re um, we tend to rely on what we know, which is um, we tend to we tend to um, basically fear comes up. So when that comes up, it's very evident in what we believe. So it's not about, again, it's not about not having fear because fear is an important aspect of life. And for one specific reason, if there was only just one reason, it protects you for from uh, being dead. It, it, it ensures you stay alive. So it is not about getting rid of fear because we need fear. Fear can sometimes be a really good driver, a very uh, good driver. But um, when we are perpetually, perpetually stuck in our fear, then um, we're, we're, we're no longer responsible for creating our life. We shift that responsibility to, to, to some aspect that is uh, fear-based. And whenever we create from fear, it's never Number one, it's never lasting because the very aspect of fear, it comes from lack. So what am I trying to say here in a very long way? Trust yourself more and trust in what you already know is true for you. And if you trust that um, you uh, will, for example, if you trust that at the end of this, you will be uh, worse off than before, then I wouldn't suggest trusting in that. That is you trusting in fear. It's not trusting in yourself because you are not fear, you are abundance. Rather, practice believing that there is something more that you can see. And we're all faced with that. So I hope that message uh, rings true to someone. Let me just see, do I want to give you some cards? Sure, why not? So what is the theme for the next, uh, let's say April and May? We have the card of determination. No time like the present to practice focus and determination. And I hear you will get through it. You will get through it. You will get through it. We will all get through it. Like I said, some of us will have little bruises here and there, but you will, and some of us, unfortunately, some of us more, but you will, you will get through it. It is um, about practicing grounding, first chakra stuff, 
all about sheer survival. Makes perfect sense. So this is also a time where your fear of survival will kick in. Fear of survival um, affects everything. It affects how you create, it affects how you express, it affects how you communicate, it affects basically how you live your life. Uh, but again, it's not about not having fear because fear protects our life. Fear protects our physical body from dying. But rather, it is about recognizing some of the fears that we are carrying and how these fears deeply impact what we do and who we are or who we choose to express. And remember I talked about recalibration? at the very beginning, uh, many of you are going through the process of realizing or recognizing what is true for you and what isn't. Um, because we all cling to things out of a habit, out of habit, we just do. And bad habits are hard to break. And this time specifically, these habits will be highlighted. And what is a habit? Habit is something that we do in order to, um, to what's the word? To, it's not to fulfill, it's to, is it to fulfill? Habit is something that serves a purpose. It's, it's, it, it functions, functions as a way to give us something that we feel is missing. And it's different for each person, but at the very core of who we are, we fundamentally um, have a fear of not belonging, fear of not being loved, and fear of um, fear of being abandoned. And that's just the fear that comes with being a human. And um, we are rising from it, or we're rising above it. So, uh, where does this lead? Again, empowerment. This is. It's. Um, those of you who have hid from knowing yourself, and what I mean by that, if you are someone or if you know someone who has not taken the time to look within themselves, um, work on their shadow selves, understand themselves deeply, th those people generally will have uh, these fears amplified. And the reason for that is that there's just so much stuff that's been suppressed that this high frequency just pushes it, pushes it out to the surface. And some people will experience uh, uh, things, uh, 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 what do I call it? Some people will experience what I would call, what, what they are calling ego death, where your ego goes through a dismantling process, dismantling process where essentially you do not know who you are, you question yourself, and uh, your reality as you know it is tumbling down. What's happening is your old construct in terms of what you believe yourself to be as a human or as a, as a being is, is tumbling down. And that is not um, an easy process. It is, um, it is, uh, it is, well, let's just say it's not an easy process. And I know some of you are probably already going through that. You have been going through it already. And uh, some of you will begin to go through it, but we're all collectively going through it. Each person will just experience it differently because we're everyone is at a different level or a different space in our journey. And I don't mean level as good or worse or better. That's not what I mean. Now remember the word is rehabilitation. So the, uh, ego death, so to speak, or um, what's the, the, there's a phrase here that I wants to come out, uh, dark night of the soul. Some of you may be experiencing dark night of the soul. Some of you have had experienced it. And if you are someone who have gone through it, who has gone through it, pardon me, <clears throat> um, and you know someone who is going through it right now, uh, give them a helping hand by helping them understand what's going on. If you are listening to this channel, you are probably quite in tune. Therefore, you can probably feel out things from other people. And uh, based on them, then you, have, you can give them your understanding of what's going on. And particularly for those of you who, uh, who identify themselves as a healer. We're all healers, but for those who identify themselves as a healer, 
uh, you will know exactly what I mean. What it also means is for those of you who identify as a healer, whether you are practicing healing now or not, this is your opportunity to step into that powerful role of being a healer. And what does a healer do? A healer helps someone heal, which means you are in a process of helping somebody find their own balance. And um, uh, part of the rehabilitation or <clears throat> recalibration is uh, certain someone, certain certain use, some of you, uh, will begin to practicing things like Reiki, um, holistic healing. You will begin to give of yourself in a different way than you've done it before. And for many of you, this will actually shift you or transition you more towards what you are here to do in this space and time. So uh, when I was talking about opportunities and work related, this is one example of those of you whose jobs are ending, will be ending or have ended or you know have been put on hold. Uh, this will usher a new opportunity of starting something um, you've always wanted to try, but weren't really sure if it was going to uh, work out or the financial situation. Um, if this is you, if this rings true to you, please take advantage of it. You will probably never see this again, not for a very, very long time, not in this lifetime. Personal transformation, need I say more? What is transformation? Transformation in, in other way of saying it is death. Death is transformation. It, and uh, whew, this is this is we are collectively going through that. Um, but I'm talking to fire signs, so yes, you are going through your own transformation. Everyone is. And um, if I was to tell you that patience is required, you'd probably throw something at the screen. Yet I'm going to say it anyway. <clears throat> it's difficult to be patient when there is perceived chaos. But from where I stand, and I know some of you will understand this, even in the chaos, there is divine perfection. I've seen it, I've, I've seen it. It's very strange to understand it with a logical mind. You have to be on a, almost like on a different wavelength. But even in this chaos, there is absolutely divine, um, divine, um, what's the word? Divine um, perfection and we are all being guided through it. So that's what's going on for the next, um, well, let's say month, month and a half. And all of this is happening in order to almost like recharge our batteries, is to wake up us, wake us up from sleep, uh, make us be more or help us become more aware because no one can make you become more aware. There's no such thing, nothing can make you something can shed light on something and you can choose to look at it differently and that shapes your perception. But I, like, I can't make you uh, shift your perception. I can't make you shift consciousness. Um, however, the times we are in right now are certainly supportive of that. So uh, this is all basically to help us, to help us wake up, to help us wake up. So let's move on to each individual sign. For Sagittarius, what is it that you might want to um, focus on in a month of April and a little bit of May? And by the way, the moment I said the word Sagittarius, I got a headache. So some of you Sagittarians will be experiencing headache. And I have one here in the back on, of my head on the left side, but it could be on any side. Um, mostly it's a side headache. So it could be on one side only and it feels When I tune it into it, it's almost like a pulsation. And it's from the inside, not from the outside. Um, um, I just heard the word recalibrating. So we are being recalibrated. And um, I actually have just been told that through this change, uh, the, through, this, the, through the difference in frequency, because we are shifting to higher frequency, our brain is recalibrating and I'm going, wow, that's just way too, that's not my pay grade. Um, just kidding. And that can cause headaches. So if you've had headaches before, this may feel amplified. I'm not a doctor. I'm not diagnosing anything or anyone. 
if you experience headaches and it's gone on for too long, obviously go and have it checked with a doctor. But for the major for majority of you, this is what are uh, what I call what they call ascension as as ascension symptoms. Uh, so the moon in reverse came up, and what comes to me first and foremost is don't be afraid of yourself. Now. I don't know about you, but I've experienced this myself and I've seen it in my clients. Uh, by far, by far, by far, by far, most people are afraid of their own power, except it's not conscious and it logically makes no sense because there's nothing logical about it. It's beyond our logic. So the message here is uh, don't be afraid to be yourself. Some of you, uh, it's regarding this recalibration. As you begin to recalibrate your life, as you are being recalibrated, you will begin to feel more uplifted and it will literally feel like you assume a different role, it, a, a much more empowered role. And for some of you, it may scare you. If you've been conditioned to think of yourself as small, all of a sudden feeling in your own power can be very scary. I've experienced that a few times and it was terrifying to me. It was it was both elating and terrifying at the same time, which is really, really, really strange feeling. And I remember asking, why am I afraid? I literally heard, this is what they say when they say you are afraid of your own power. It's like, holy crap, that shit is real. So uh, pardon me, my French. My French comes out once in a while. <laughs> Uh, so Sagittarians, don't be afraid of your own power. Any situation that requires your attention, particularly speaking up, speak your truth, speak it from your power. Don't speak it from uh, fear or, or, or lack. Step into your power and speak your truth. Very, very important. And uh, by speaking your truth, you will, uh, ch the dynamics between you and other people will change and that is a guarantee. So that's for Sagittarians. Um, also for Sagittarians, the month of April is very important month for you. I also said the year. So for Sagittarians, this is a very important year, but I'm gonna say not just for Sagittarians. I think it's important for everyone. I don't care what sign you are. You could add on 10 extra signs. It'll be important for everybody. Um, but there's something masterful happening for you Sagittarians and I feel some of you will understand what I mean by that, even though I, as Joanna, don't understand. Now, Leo, interesting. You've got the eight of uh, coins. So, uh, and I just heard the word priorities, priorities, priorities. So over the next month, month and a half, make sure you know clearly within yourself what truly are your priorities. Is your priority to say yes, 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 because you feel obligated? Or is your priority to say uh, yes to you and therefore say no to somebody else? And that's just an example. And we all have things that are important, but um, in certain times we realize that we spend a lot of times on things that really aren't important. Um, so that's the message. The other message I hear is pay attention what your, where your head goes. And uh, obviously head is to do with thoughts. Pay attention what you focus on. And uh, because anything we focus on right now is amplified and, or anything we focus on, uh, yeah, is amplified. And therefore the results of your amplified focus become your reality very quickly. So know where your resources, your energy goes and manage your resources wisely. By resources, I mean your energy. So that's, um, that's for Leos. For Aries, the Nine of Swords uh, came up. And um, what I feel here is that some of you may feel extra alert in the next um, month to month and a half. And I'm, and I'm hearing explain to them what that means. You might feel extra jumpy. You might feel uh, extra cautious. You might feel extra vigilant. It's um, the feeling of distrust may feel amplified. But remember what I said at the beginning, I believe I said at the beginning, this is a time where everything gets amplified. 
uh, and if I didn't say it, I'm going to say it now. During this time, all our feelings and emotions will get amplified. So one moment you will feel despair, the next moment you will feel like you are on cloud nine and you'll be doing this jumping, this seesaw effect as I've talked about often. Um, so um, I feel like you will be kind of extra cautious. Notice if this happens with you, if this sort of thing comes up where you're extra vigilant, extra cautious, notice where the where the root of that is where is it coming from is it coming from because um you're genuinely concerned or is it coming from your um negative view of the world in general and i hear the word blame so if you come from a space where, for example, your parents blamed the government for them being unhappy, chances are you have acquired a bit of that because that's what we do. We mimic our environment and it becomes a part of us. And then we may have a very, uh, very skewed view of the world where we may begin, where we, we may really feel that the world is really deceitful and we really have to be cautious. If that is your belief, if that is your belief, if that is your core belief, then you will live your truth. So when this comes up for you, this is an absolutely tremendous opportunity to re a, realize that this is how you are wired internally and B, kind of work with your shadow self and ask yourself some questions. Where is it coming from? Uh, why do I believe in this? There's always a space in time somewhere in your past that creates an experience of, or series of experiences where these experiences imprint a certain thing on you. And that thing, your, your um, perception of what's happening, uh, eventually becomes a belief. And remember, you are in a space of rehabilitation or recalibrating. So this would be a fantastic time for you to recalibrate uh, what you believe, which will change how you think. And with that said, we are all rising in consciousness, like it or not. If you are alive, if you are breathing, if you are hearing, even if you're not, uh, you are rising in consciousness. It's just the way it is. The difference is how much do you trust the process and how much do you resist? We are breaking old patterns. We are breaking old beliefs. We are essentially breaking away from being ourselves. And that is not an easy thing to anyone. The soul is like, yes, finally. But the ego self is not particularly happy. So uh because majority of you are probably in a space where you are self-quarantined or spending more time in your own space all it that's happening is the world is creating a space for us to come into tune with who we are as a soul okay so with that said I hope you like this new format. I actually, it felt really natural to me. I actually loved it. It flowed beautifully. Um, and I feel I give everyone a little bit of everything. Please do comment. Um, I want to get away from labels as much as I can. So even, you know, even going through certain signs, um, it's it's like, oh, I want to get away from, from certain, you know, from labels. But I'm kind of doing almost like a soft shift um because some people identify with you know if it's not if it doesn't say Sagittarius how do I know it's for me some some I'm kind of spoon feeding some of you a little bit but definitely as time goes on uh the spoon will go away because um you're going to feel empowered and you're not going to need to uh you know all you want to do is you're going to trust with what you hear and how it lands for you um if you would like a healing session with me um I have uh, ramped up my healing uh, sessions and I had uh, sh I shifted my, my priorities. So um, you, if you are wanting to have a healing, and this is an, an amazing time for healing, energy healing, because the healing, the energy just pushes uh, what's happening right now. So it gives it almost like an extra boost. And um, yeah, so if you're interested in that, uh, that information is down below. Again, thank you so much. I hope you like this new format. Let me know what you think. And um, I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.